So I was talking about the SM, the fetish, the bondage scene there. It's an exaggerated example, but there is a core truth to it, I think, which is this. That a couple falling in love in the 30s would have done so by processes recognisable to our ancestors going back millions of years. But it's all changed now, hasn't it? I'm talking about Tinder, online dating, that sort of thing. I'm not knocking it. I'm sure lots of you have met people online. But on some level, it's changed everything. The one person's like a sort of set of specifications. The other's a sort of customer in a sponsored transaction. Um, I wonder if we've, if we've lost sight. OK, when I, when I started doing this, right, in the 80s, I moved to London. And I didn't know anyone. So I went on Dateline, right? Which wasn't on the internet. You were sent a form in the post, right? <laughs> <laughs> Were you, Grandad, in the post, was it? <laughs> Did the sex pigeon bring it? <laughs> we still have the post, young people. It's not time to start laughing at the post. No, it's not, it's not time for Peter Kay to start remembering it yet. <laughs> Remember the post? We still have that, Peter. Really? No. <laughs> That's why he had to cancel his tour, I heard. He had... No, he had... he had two hours on the post, and then someone went... we have still got that. He went, really? If... Oh, fucking hell, I've done all this... <laughs> you know, you'd post a letter, wouldn't you? Uh. So... <laughs> put a stamp on... Uh. So... <laughs> That new thing, on <laughs> that's nostalgia about things that are still here. It's a new thing I'm developing. So, uh, <laughs> uh, but you know, you got you got to send a you got sent a form in the post, and you had to tick these little boxes of your interests. You, you know, like like swimming, flower arranging, restaurants, whatever. And one of the boxes you could tick in 1989 on the Dateline form, it was marked jazz. Stroke folk. <laughs> All the other musics, heavy metal, classical, disco, whatever, they had their own boxes. But jazz and folk <laughs> had been put in together. Like the Dateline bloke, he just sort of had enough of it, you know, he's just gone, oh, <laughs> those fucking people. But it didn't make sense to me then, putting jazz and folk together. It doesn't make sense to me now, because they're different, aren't they? Jazz and folk. Because <laughs> folk music, in essence, is about taking an ancient melody or phrase and asking the performer not to improvise with it, not to alter it in any way, to pass it on like an anonymous conduit down through history, unchanged for future generations. Whereas jazz music, in contrast, is about taking an existing musical phrase and asking the performer to use their imagination to improvise with it, to alter it ideally beyond all recognition, a process quite the diametric opposite of the folk procedure. So I didn't tick that box, I just wrote all that in it in really tiny letters. <laughs> and that was what caught the eye of the woman who went on to become my first wife. She was a jazz folk musician. <laughs> And she was profoundly depressed <laughs> because she suspected that what she was trying to do was to combine two incompatible approaches <laughs> to the ultimate detriment of both. And I sympathised with her because at the time I was in a double act with Richard Herring. <laughs> but the thing about being in a jazz folk relationship <laughs> is I never knew if we were going to have Jazz sex, a wildly improvisatory procedure that returned to its initial theme only after every possible permutation had been exhausted. <laughs> or folk sex, a far more traditional approach, obsessed with historical accuracy, <laughs> that normally continued way past the point where it ceased to be entertaining. <laughs> until one or both of the main protagonists were dead. Or a combination of both, jazz folk sex. A wildly improvisatory procedure, obsessed with historical accuracy, but enlivened at unexpected moments by the sudden introduction of a clarinet. 